Well, we made it. Welcome back, everybody. We're at step 12. For those of you tuning in for the first time, my name is Tom. I'm one of the pastors here at Northside Christian Church. Um, it's my pleasure to be over the care ministry, and part of that includes our recovery ministry. And we've been talking about the 12-step process uh, through the Christian church and what that looks like um, and embracing really what are the roots of the 12 steps. And now we have come to our conclusion, step 12. And I say that uh, somewhat um, sarcastically because we're never done. Uh, 12 is the end of the initial process, and but for many things in our life and our spiritual growth, really just the beginning. So let me read the step as I usually do. We'll break it down. We'll go through it word for word. Step 12 says, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. And this step is usually interpreted, and I, I, I think there's some truth to that, as taking the recovery message, and, and let's say if I'm a recovering alcoholic or drug addict, I'm going to carry the message of sobriety to other alcoholics and drug addicts that are struggling and new and coming into a 12-step program. And that's true. That's right. It's not wrong. But I think we undersell the fact that this is about practicing this in all our affairs. And, of course, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But just encouraging all of you that this is more about what we're doing with our life in general. How are we conveying the gospel? How are we taking uh, that God has transformed us? We, those of you that are hearing this, I know you know what I'm talking about. You're being transformed by the power of God. And what a message to share with others in many and all contexts. So let's look at this through the wording of the step. Having means possessing. And this is what I tell people about your faith and your relationship with Christ. When it's yours and you own it and you know it, no one can take it away from you. There's not an argument for Buddhism. There's not an argument for uh, Confucianism. There's nothing that anybody could say about any of those other faiths, any of the world religions that would make you give up being a Christian. Because if you possess the knowledge of Christ, and he's living on the inside of you, there's nothing anybody can do to talk you out of that or take it away. And the same can be said for our recovery. When you know that the 12 steps work, that you've been rescued, and that you're living in the power of God, there's not a person that can take that away from you. So when we talk about words like having, we can glance right over those, but they're powerful. You possess that, it belongs to you, and no one can take it away. So having had, and this just means that it's already happened, a spiritual... So we could say religious, if I can write, <laughs> religious awakening. We could talk about having to do with your soul. And one of the words I really like that I found in the dictionary was sacred, having a sacred awakening. You know, it's a, it's a special moment when, when the lights turn on. And all, some of you may have had that at step one. Some of you may have had that at step three, four, five, whatever it is. But at some point in the process, the lights turned on. This was working for you, and you knew it. And so we're talking about this waking up. And I put down uh, Ephesians 5.14 as our scripture for this. Because part of in that is talking about rise up, rise, O sleeper. Wake up, wake up. And so literally we're waking up to a spiritual uh, reality. Um, I heard someone say once, we're not humans having a spiritual experience, we're, human, we're spirits having a human experience. And I think that sometimes we have to wake up to that reality. You know, I can get caught up in the day-to-day -day being a parent, working, being a spouse, taking care of my yard, and none of those things are bad. There's nothing wrong with that. And all of our work should be done unto the Lord. So all of those things can be worthwhile pursuits and are. But sometimes I can get so wrapped up in those things, I forget that I am a child of God. I am a spirit. I have an eternity in front of me. I'm going to spend that eternity in heaven with God, and that i got to keep things in perspective. And there's nothing like to shove us into perspective like an addiction or a struggle and the process of waking up to that. And so I just encourage you, live in that awareness, live in that awakeness, if you will. You know, uh, I was having a conversation over lunch, and we talked about, for me, one of the scariest things said in Scripture is that Jesus is going to say to some, I never knew you. You know, he said, you'll even do things in my name. You'll drive out demons. You'll, you'll do good stuff, and you'll, and you'll do it in my name. And still, at the end of time, I'm going to say, I never knew you. That just scares me. I don't know if it scares you if you struggle with that the way I do. But I want to make sure I know him, I'm aware of him, and I live in that reality all the time. And I think that step 12 is encouraging us to live in that reality. 
And so our awakening is a result of these steps. I should go back for a minute. I wasn't planning on saying this, but I want to I talk about this. So the original 12 steps were actually six. And the original reading of this step said a spiritual experience, having had a spiritual experience. And that was based on one of the original co-founders of the original 12-step program. He was dying. He was losing his mind due to his alcoholism. And he describes a very real and vivid uh, spiritual experience, an event, an event that happened that changed him forever. And, and I believe that was an encounter with the Holy Spirit, a very powerful one. And I encourage you, if you want to read about that, it's in the story of Bill Wilson. But that's beside the point. The reason they changed it to spiritual awakening is because not everybody has that sudden and intense thing that changes them. They found that many people were having the same result in increments, that they were getting an incremental change that led to the same sort of mental, emotional, and spiritual reversal that he had suddenly. And so we call that having had a spiritual awakening. So I would even go so far as to say you've probably had incremental awakenings over time. And now the culmination of that is what we're talking about in step 12. Hope that makes sense to everybody. But some people do have that intense, and it's a good place to say this. If you're talking with somebody and you're sharing Christian to Christian and they say, well, why does your church support a 12-step program? Don't you just need one step stepping to Jesus? Well, that's true. They're not wrong. But whatever we're struggling with, I'm sure most of us, if not all of us, prayed about it at one time, wondered why God wouldn't take it away, struggled with that. And then we found this program and we realized that for some of us, we need those bite-sized chunks. We need another person who's been there to help us be accountable and to walk us through what it looks like to learn to wake up and to have that awakening. And so that is, they're talking about stepping to Jesus being a spiritual experience, and it is, and it's great. And if you can do that, and I meet people from time to time that say, hey, one day I just woke up, and I surrendered that to God, and I've never looked back, that's fantastic. That's awesome. We don't limit the power of God. But for people like me, people like you, we need the incremental version, and thank goodness God put it there for us to use. And so it's the result of these steps through these increments And then because of that, we tried to carry this message to others, to carry, right, to transport, if you will, to be the bearers of that, to be the bearers of the good news, the message, the message of salvation, the message of recovery and transformation, all the things that happened to us along the way. And more importantly, I think what we're saying is, hey, if this can happen for me, it can happen for you. I think that's a big thing about how God has used my life since he transformed me and, and took addiction out of my life is that he's used that from that point on to say to others, if I can do this, you can do this. You can have these, you can have these promises. You can have these things in your life as well and how powerful that is. And then it's not just carrying that message because if my mouth is saying one thing and my body's doing another, I'm not a very good witness. So the second half of this carrying the message is to practice what I'm preaching, right? We've heard that all the time. Practice these principles. And we're talking about things like forgiveness. We're talking about things like transformation, love, tolerance, all the things that not only our Christian teachings teach us, but the things we've learned and practiced in recovery, that these are the things we want to use in every aspect. And it's what I was talking about earlier. Yes, we want to carry the message of recovery to other people needing recovery, but I want to take learning how to forgive people in step eight and learning how to surrender in step one and all the things that I've learned throughout the steps, I want to practice those in all that I do. That this is really a discipleship process. This is a life living process, not just a recovery process. And so we're practicing all these principles. And then this fancy word affairs just means in everything I do, in everything I do, everywhere I go, at home, you know, one of the places I'll, I'll admit I struggle most probably to practice these principles is at home. You know, whether I'm arguing with my spouse and I go, you know what, do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Do I need to surrender here? Do I need to, is this really something that I want to battle over? Or should I come and put my arm around my spouse and say, 
you know what, let's do this together, let's surrender to this, or I'm holding on to a grudge, maybe coworker or, or a family member or something, am I, am I practicing the forgiveness that I learned in these steps? And so it's a good reminder, even for me, I've been sober a while, I've been doing this a while, I've been teaching this a while, I still need to be reminded, am I practicing the principles in all my affairs? So again, this is kind of the culmination of what we've been doing, but it's also a beginning. Because I know for me, God continues to show me through relationships, through the places I'm not practicing these things, areas that need to be surrendered. Maybe other areas in my life that I need to take the steps and apply the principles of the steps and go through that. So I don't think we ever outgrow the need for this. It just changes on what we need to apply it to in our lives. So that concludes 12 steps, the 12 Christian steps of recovery. I uh, hope it's been helpful. These will remain up here as long as uh, people are still viewing them and needing them. And uh, um, we hope to uh, see you live and in person very, very soon. God bless all of you. We'll see you later.